Hey there, folks. I wonder if you can even hear this. I better do a sound check. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three, testing. Stop recording. So, yeah, that worked, but I was wearing headphones and talking through the speaker. I mean, the laptop mic. So, why wear headphones if I'm using the laptop mic? So, now I'm doing it with the headphones. Bluetooth headphones. We're back to that. Just for fun. So just for fun, Spooky Ball, this is, it is kind of nighttime. It's definitely dark. It's early in the morning. I'm getting prepped for day four of a five-day marathon with Coding with Kids, Carl Sandburg College, Illinois. Of course, I'm still here in Portland. These are pictures. That's mom. She's actually laughing because I'm taking her picture of her sitting on the porch here. You see all my decals in the back. And then just looking around the house. We have an interesting house. I've been calling it Russia House um, for various reasons. Partly just to balance that Portland needs to have its own sort of diplomacy going, given D.C. is pulled the plug on most of what we considered American. I'm referring, of course, to the Bucky stuff. Having been inside lots of embassy homes, I know that the Bucky books, cultural attaches and stuff, um, would have those on their shelves. And America's positive futurism was a big part of its edge in world affairs. Now, I think after Fuller died and they kind of just pulled the plug or tried to, no more Mr. Nice Guy, no more Mr. Nice Guy, no more World's Fairs, no more nothing. We're going to be mean now. Uh, I think that was a, an attempt to just pull the plug, right, on the Bucky stuff, but it had a lot of momentum. What I've been learning from studying the grid stuff is that you don't just pull the plug. It's like a freight train. When you've got a current, big current going down the line, or I don't care if we're talking AC or DC, if you've got all that momentum and you think you can just pull the plug and not have a train wreck of some kind, like that momentum doesn't just evaporate. I think, you know, we hear this phrase like, well, you can always just pull the plug. And that's true if we're talking about like a spooky ball like this, right? I can just... I can just open the circuit and, you know, but what if this gets really dangerous in here and I I really want to turn it off in a hurry, but I know that if I just flip the switch or pull the plug, it's going to cause an explosion, maybe not right here, but somewhere else. So, you know, if you don't really understand the principles then you're going to get bit. And I think that that's what was going on in the early days of electricity, and that's why we needed uh, that guy Steinmetz, is it? The GE guy, kind of a dwarf-like guy. He and Tesla and a lot of people were really into the basic research. And I think what we do, the mistake we make, is when we treat it like a social Darwinist horse race that you have these two management teams or two theories of the universe, A and B, and you decide, oh, I'll just uh, fund B because it's more fashionable, or fund A. So it gets to be either or. Whereas a lot of the more savvy companies that are trying to get research to happen, they will fund essentially um, alternative to the point of mutually exclusive They'll fund them both uh, projects. You know, they'll fund very different approaches and see how they do. And they might learn from each other. They don't have to be kept completely insulated, and they don't have to not be told that they have competition. Like, we will allow allow people to have a lot of insight into what's going on. But you still can't be in every place at once. So if there's a research team working really hard on another approach to your problem and they're making more progress than you are, that may not be readily apparent to you. But if you just cut their funding, well, then we know they can't be a competition. And there's another impulse, the one that just wants to have security and be in control, 
that thinks the smart thing to do is just make sure we don't fund things we don't control. And I think the Bucky stuff got into that category and the plug got pulled. I'll put that in the passive tense. And it kind of blew up the State Department in some ways. It kind of wrecked foreign policy in some ways. It's kind of like the disaster that that decision brought upon Washington, D.C. was incalculable, still adding up the totals here. In the meantime, Portland cannot afford, see, when I say capitalists, by the way, I mean competing capitals. Like, I'll make fun of Philadelphia sometimes, because I don't think they're as cerebral as they think they are, compared to Portland anyway. The whole East Coast is kind of, lives on its reputation. I'm not that impressed. Having lived on both coasts now, uh, so I'll pick on another capital like Philadelphia even though I think it might make a good next capital for the next U.S. The next, if we ever do bring back the Constitution and do have another try at an America, at the moment I think we're we're drifting in an oligarchy. We don't, we're, we're not, this is, I don't know what this is. Certainly America is not the one I'm blaming for all these stupid decisions. You can't have it both ways. When you turn yourself into a, banana republic then you know the politburo gets the blame maybe i don't mean the russians either the this the imposters the imposters and their media their six people who own all the media are doing a horrible job totally horrible so interesting developments and so today we'll be not doing what I'm showing on the screen right now because it's not a 3D or 4D or any of it. It's, a, it's 2D. What we do in my class is flat stuff. And I'm, I, to, I told them that. I, I say, you know, we haven't talked as much in this class about the development of perspective but you're looking at 2D screen right now, and photographs are clearly rendering space, and yet they do it somehow on a flat surface. And, of course, painting develops perspective as a technique. You know, put those slants in there just the way they need to be. Painting did this before we had photography. These are geeks taking a lunch break at OSCON. This guy's looking at me sort of suspicious. It's like, he caught me. He caught me shooting a picture. That guy, too. That guy, too. All right. So mostly guys at OSCON. You can got to get a sense of the demographic by my just going across here. And uh, I did not give a talk this year. I have in the past. Uh, same at PyCon. I was there more as someone who'd evaluated proposals, made recommendations, and someone who's interested in the long-term meaning of open source. I think at some level it's got to mean transparency in organization beyond just talking about what your source code tools are. I don't think that PayPal's inner source is the answer either. In other words, I think it's something to do with universities getting back on track and stop seeing themselves as patent mills and stop making intellectual property uh, be so much what you're into because that's an investment in the British uh, language ecosystem or legal system, I should say, which I think is going to have to go down in flames or has gone down in flames on a lot of fronts. The corporation law... I'm not saying I have, you know, you're going to tell me that I'm supporting Sharia law or something, and that's really not the case. Not that I'm, you know, we have Sharia banks in Whittier, or at least one. It's it's not either or, again. And you want to buy a car or a house, it's kind of up to you what rules you want to play by. I, I don't see any necessity to protect uh, one set of banks from another set of banks. You may want to get the government on your side to to fight your 
rival banks, but you may be out of luck on that. You may be out of luck. We're looking at the back of Hitler's head here. These are pictures from, that's a blurry picture from Triumph of the Will. And I am very aware that in Europe, they're not worried so much about Americans being racist or sexist as they're worried about Americans falling in towards fascism, imploding. And I totally get that. I think that is what we need to worry about as well, because garden variety racism, it's ugly, it's ignorant, but it's also kind of something we've been combating successfully. But the Nazis supposedly lost World War II, but the Third Reich concept was pretty appealing to a lot of people, and a lot of the top thinkers actually got jobs uh, advising the United States. And I think the Russians point that out. Like, they didn't hire as many Nazis after the war. And um, this pivot that the Dulles brothers uh, sort of engineered were all, of, I think it was great, based on the legacy of World War I, just trashing Germany was um, not working. And building up Germany after the war was a good idea. But making Russians the new enemy that, you know, that's kind of a British idea, I think. I think the Americans and the Russians are going to get along just fine, and the Brits don't want that to happen, but it's not their problem, really. They've got Brexit to worry about. So I think we are going to have close relations with Russia, and Portland's going to be a big part of that. Like I said, I call this Russia House. If you just come in here and start trashing Putin, just like a knee-jerk liberal, because you watch a lot of NPR, I'm going to throw you out, you know. I don't want that kind of trash talk in my house. All right, so I think that's, there's the crowbar hanging out there sometimes. They got a new a beer watering hole, hey, Hayden, and, and these are our friends. Anyway, I'm just wandering through my, those were my whole high school I went to high school with um, Norman Rockwell's grandson, and not high school. I was in Cub Scouts with Norman Rockwell's grandson, Jeffrey, and Hayden, whose dad is a glass, a stained glass make, making artist in um, in Italy, and he was our Cub Scout den dad after my mom was a den mother. I've talked about that in other YouTubes. I will not ramble on any further. Good morning, everyone. It's 4.55 a.m. on July 25th. And no, I don't watch the Mueller report stuff. I do not care about Russiagate at all anymore. Not that I ever did care that much. I actually don't think that the... Um, Political parties, they're parties, they're private clubs, they're not part of the government, really. They think they are, they're not in the Constitution, and they have no special right to, like, FBI protection. They can go buy their third-party, you know, geek protection services and their antivirus or whatever. But everyone's trying to hack into everyone. It goes on all the time, all day long, from every source possible. Some are just kids. A lot of them are just kids. And, you know, we can try to sort out who's who and who's working for what government and so forth. But if you're at all competent and want to be president, you got to have your security act together. And I don't think the DNC did. And so they got hacked. I don't care if it's by Russia. If you don't get your security act together, don't go whining to the FBI. It's not their job to protect you. Handle it. Deal with it. Right? So, you know... I'm okay that the Russians hacked the DNC if that's what happened. I hope they do it again. Same with the GOP if they can't get their act together. They're both just country club, private, golf club, garbage, oligarch, run, crap, right? I don't care. Those parties, I don't care. Anyway, talk to you soon.